good I changed. Anybody know the song? Nope. Not a clue. Come on, guys. Cheryl Crow. A change no. will do you good. Oh. Sure, sure, no idea. Okay. Nope. Well, today's topic we chose to talk about change, and I think that change, um, I don't mean pocket change, if that even exists anymore. Does anybody ever get change? I feel like I'm always using my debit card. I like throw it in my center console, my car when I have it. It's annoying. Otherwise, yeah, it's a washing I have, machine. I still have like the old school jar that, you know, I always think I'll take to the bank to cash in and I never do. Yeah, I, I don't even have change. Giant, I put in that. I have a giant money in there. water jug like at home, like one of those ones you yep. like put on the uh, yeah. little tab thing. Like that, that used to be a real thing because people used to use cash to buy things and then it ended up... Now I feel like I'm always on my debit card. Venmo, Zelle, Zilli, Apple whatever pay. you call it. It's Apple like a pay. game yeah. changer now. I'm it is. Standard very, stuff. Yeah, it, it, it is. Double click the side button, face ID. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> so amazing. However, this is not the type of change I was trying to talk about today. <laughs> it is change, though. It is. Um, I'm just thinking about the landscape of education and how it has changed and how we, you know, we as a people, how we have adjusted to that. Um, your faces just are so telling. It's very aggressive. <laughs> we the people. Um, how how we change to that. And and Judge Pulliam spoke. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> um, I was at a LISCD on Friday and I saw George Kiro speak and, I, and, it, and he wasn't speaking about change necessarily but it made me think about change because I saw him once and this was a very similar if not the same presentation that I saw the first time but a lot has changed for me since I saw him then and how much of what I learned from him the first time have I put into practice personally and professionally and, and how have I changed since I saw him because he's a dynamic speaker and, and he's inspirational and let me just stop my alarm. I apologize. If it's, it's not the announcement. My bar. Well, I, so I was alarm. just looking. I think we I think we timed it very poorly again because in ten minutes the bell's gonna ring. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go to the bell and we're gonna see how it goes, and then we'll take a brief pause for me to eat my bar and for the passive class to happen. Um, but I think I to go back. I think to back to myself as a person and how I used to handle change. Um, for example, long story, very short. I promise, Joe Licato, if you're listening, I will be brief. When I first started teaching here, I taught eighth grade. Um, the middle school, the junior high was turning into a middle school, and the ninth grade was coming up. And I was told I was going to move from R RMS up to, or Ronkonkoma Junior High, up to the high school. And I cried. And I don't mean a little. I mean, I cried every day in the month of June as I packed up my classroom. So much so that my old principal, Greg Murtha, came to me and he left a book on my desk called Who Moved My Cheese? Have you heard of this book? No. I feel like you brought this up once before. But I've moved, brought up Who Moved My Cheese before? I'm pretty sure you did. Have you? I don't remember it. Maybe, it's a book? Maybe just talking. It's about a mouse and his either, cheese. Either it brought, literally is about a mouse and either cheese. Either you brought this up at a previous episode very briefly or we talked and about I this outside out. of here. <laughs> it, definitely, it, de it sounds familiar, but continue. Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> We'll it's about a mouse. Listeners tell us if we talk. Yeah. It's about a mouse and cheese. But it, well, it, it's a short book, 40 something pages. And I was almost like, why did he leave this book on my desk? Like, why am I reading a book about a mouse and cheese? And I realized shortly after I read it that it was because I was crying every day. And he wanted me to understand that, you know, sometimes, you know, ultimately the mouse is, had to change his environment in order to get the cheese. You know what I mean? And sometimes a change of environment gives you something that you want when you don't even know you wanted it, you know? Um, I still cried after the book. I think I was too young at the time to really understand like the what he was trying to tell me. He then asked me, are you sure you wanna move? Do you want me to just leave you here? And I said no. Uh, and I actually, in full disclosure, hated working at the high school for the first three years I worked here. I hated it. I actually went back to him and begged to go back. I said, you have to send me back. And he said, Elise, you are going back to a place that is not the same. So you're, you're wanting to go back to a memory, not a not an actual place that is what you think it is now. And he was right, you know, Mark and Greg were both up here. All, a lot of the teachers that I knew were up here. The sixth grade was now in the building with all those teachers. And, and I listened to him and I didn't move and I, I actually came to find my way in the high school 
And I learned to love it. I grew, I didn't even learn to love it. I grew to love it. I became a class advisor. I got myself involved in all different things. But my first three years were really a struggle here. Um, and I think about the way I am now, you know, two decades later and how I handle change. Um, and there's kind of like little fires everywhere in my, in my life, whether it be personally or professionally, you know, whether or not my son wants to put his socks on in the morning or whether or not, you know, I'm able to... You know, everything changes in technology every day, and every day is something different. And I think that I've grown over time in learning to deal with change. But when I was in the classroom, I don't know that I... I don't know that I appreciated change for what it was. I saw it as an interrupter. I saw it as, like, something that threw me off my routine and something that didn't... did not make me better. You know what I mean? The better was in the consistency. And, and although there is something to certainly be said for consistency, I don't know that it's always the best when you look at it from that angle. I don't know if you guys see what I'm saying or why I picked this topic. Am I rambling on? Can anybody help me out here? Bueller? Well, that's all we got this week. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, I, I think education is just changing rapidly. Um, I, I can speak for here. From when I first started with BOCES up until now, like I only my only focus really was like one or two things when I came on because there wasn't much to focus on in regards to educational technology. However, now sometimes I can't keep up with my job because it's there's so many platforms, there's so many changes within the platforms. There's different devices that we have now. We We've got just... gadgets and gizmos aplenty. Yeah, literally. We've got who's <laughs> it's and what's it's galore. You want thingamabobs? We have a hundred licenses. <laughs> but who cares? All right, easy there, Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's Little Mermaid. Yes. <laughs> yeah, good job. Uh, See, somebody knew a song uh, I sang today. I do break out into song every once in a while, you guys. Uh, Dorothy, our clerical, enjoys it when I'm in there. Just breaking out to 80s music sometimes in the middle of the, the workshop. Music, yeah. It really puts <laughs> me in the best mood of all. But, I mean... Kevin, you have to be able to speak. I mean, I feel like you came into work one day and your job was one thing, and then you kind of came in the next day and like, here's something else completely. That's a huge change. Well, yeah, and also, so for me, a lot of things have changed as far as work. So like, pandemic, before pandemic, things like that. Like I, you know, moved up different positions, so there's been different responsibilities for me. So change. Talk to us about your 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 different positions. I don't think anybody even knows that. Talk to us about what, where day, you've come from. Which I made back in the back day. In the day. <laughs> Six years ago, I came into here. Frankfurters only cost a nickel. <laughs> this is a great I came, episode. I came, uh, I came into the district <laughs> as a uh, network and systems technician. Um, That's when dude, I first met you. Yeah. Aww. In the in the lab at Slocum, and I thought mm -hmm. you were the the computer lab TA in Victoria. <laughs> yeah. There's, because there it was two, two Victorias. Me and, and her. Yeah, so it confused yeah. me. And then I realized she was not that Victoria. Ah, she was a different Victoria. A different Victoria was there probably the <laughs> next time he showed up. Yeah. Um, but I came in as a technician, had building responsibilities. I had very minimal exposure to, like, the network. I had some Probably responsibility for ignoring the bell. <laughs> We're going to have to pause. And please pause for an interlude. <laughs> Back to our regularly scheduled interrupted program. Uh, <laughs> I did get to I, eat my bar, everyone, though. Um, I think I started talking about um, how I started here. So my job changed over. I've been here. I'll be here seven years. In September, I started out as a technician. Um, so I had responsibility in the building. I also had some responsibility of managing the iPads with John Mako and Jen when they when I got here, um, but my role evolved slowly um, based on just knowledge and skills and things like that. I started getting more responsibility in the department while balancing the building responsibilities. Um, the change came where like I started doing more of the network side of things, and I did a desk audit. And I ended up changing positions, change, Ooh. Um, to Network and Systems Specialist 1. Um, that just came with more responsibility, you know, maintaining the network, working on certain projects, learning to upgrade servers, manage a lot of servers. Um, and then fast forward a little bit more, and another change came, is that with all that responsibility, I did another desk audit, and 
here I am, I think two or three years almost now into being a network and system specialist too, which now has entailed a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. A lot of calls from me. Yeah. No. <laughs> He's my 911. I was going to say, um, you know, managing the Google domain, um, sharing some responsibility of, you know, helping to lead and manage the department. You know, that's a big change in something that's like out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, change is good though. But like, like both of you said, technology is always evolving. So there's always something new to learn about. Um, there's never any like quiet time anymore. No, where it's definitely. like, oh, this is like a pretty light day, and then no, it's like it's... I haven't had. It's been 84 years since I've had quiet time. Damn, this isn't about you. <laughs> it's always about me, Victoria. It's not about oh, you. Come on. Um, I don't know. I, I think the change. I think the hardest change for me, professionally, was just uh, stepping out of the classroom. Even before this job, just in being the mentor, like stepping say, away from I'm students. I'm sure, like even changing roles from, you know, teacher to mentor to even this. I'm sure that was for you. I mean, this. If you would have asked me, you know, where I would be, this would not have been it. Not that I'm not happy to be here, but I just I'm, I've changed so much into like. I, I rolled with this change in a way that I'm really proud of. You know what I mean? Because I would not have expected it of myself. So let me, let me just clarify what I meant by that. You know, like, I am happy to be here. I love what I'm doing. But when I went and got my degree in administration, when I stepped out of the classroom to, co- to become the mentor, it had absolutely nothing to do with technology or this job, you know. Um, I became the mentor to see if I would be able to change stepping away from students. Um, and this job just... I mean, in full disclosure, like, I think the pandemic, the role I played in the pandemic prepared me to to take this job head on. Uh, had there been no pandemic, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know where I would be. I, I talk about that a lot with my cousin. My cousin, uh, um, he was uh, the commissioner of emergency service for New York City for a period of time just recently. Um, and he'll say forever that if it wasn't for 9-11, he would have never had that job because he was a ESU sergeant and he was a leader through that whole tragedy and through the recovery of that tragedy. And he said like the whole trajectory of his career went a different way once once that happened. And I, and I, and I view my own career the same way in the pandemic, but I just know the self I knew before handles change differently. Um, whereas in my early 20s, it made me cry and panic. <laughs> um, you know, now I actually get excited about change. I invite change. I think that change challenges me um, as a person. And challenge is, like, not comfortable. You know what I mean? It's not comfortable. Um, and that's a good thing. because I feel No, it, it will, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, There's a lot of things you that you don't people. know that are coming your way. Exactly. Like, the, like, yeah. the expectations are different for everything right. Mm-hmm. Right. with every change. Yeah. I mean, especially <laughs> even in this job, like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I, the challenge... I think I, I, I think I took it head on and every day I still am learning more, but you know, the, the previous me would not have done it. Like, I just don't think I would have, let alone with a toddler and a six month old infant and you know, a partridge in a pear tree. I don't know that I would have, but I think I've grown over time. And I think that that applies, you know, the reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is, you know, A, I just saw George Kiros on Friday and he always re-inspires me to talk about things like this, but like thinking about the classroom and how it has changed like i give teachers today man like credit beyond credit beyond credit beyond credit credit i give you credit because your whole landscape of teaching has changed you know like i just even look at this like the phone kids are holding computers in their hands like they are holding the ability to look something up in 0.5 seconds less than that even and tell you, and this was something where you know you as the as the teacher used to be the disseminator of information, and now you're just not. And it's your job to cultivate a room filled with critical thinkers, so they know how to get the information. What are they doing with it once they have it? So that is very different because when I was first being an educator, you, you my job was to give them information and to help them comprehend internally digest the information I'd given them, and it kind of it kind of, I don't want to say it stopped there, but that was my main job. You know what I mean? I, they don't know this and I got to get it to them. 
So let them absorb, and we're gonna make sure that they absorbed it, and we're gonna move on. That was yeah, uh, yes, yes, and and and, and, uh, and full disclosure that it is what it is. And then as I started to get to the end of my time in the classroom, it was it was more about how am I helping them navigate this information? How am I helping them know what to do with it once they have it? How is reading The Great Gatsby, chapter seven, my favorite chapter of all chapters? making them better people, making them critical thinkers, making them understand the world differently. It wasn't just about like, do they get the symbolism of the car? You know what I mean? It wasn't about that anymore. Um, and even more so today, now 10 more years has passed since then. And what is, teach what is teaching about today? What is it about? And if you're not doing it in a certain way and reaching the kids in a certain way, you know, it becomes more difficult to manage your class. It becomes more difficult to uh, get any type of feedback from students, you know. So it's a constant shift and change and, and all of that. So I think this topic for, for our listeners was a good topic because I, I want to kind of foster that discussion about how have you handled change, like, or... or it what, could be curriculum changes. Yeah. There's so many curriculum changes that have come Absolutely. across within the past few years technological changes like how has your classes changed with the devices that were provided to you mm -hmm. in the classroom and are you like 21 year old Elise crying every day about it or are you like 42 year old Elise who's you know she's 42 I'm 42 42, uh, 42. 42? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, is, are you like 42 year old Elise who's now you know after 20 years of growth like cheering at the change you know like bring it on Bring it on. Um, it, it's it's hard. Change is hard, but absolutely. You know, sometimes oh, it has to happen for growth. I uh, the esports thing has been a change for me. Oh my god! Yeah. I know we've talked about this already, but like for me, interacting with students, it's a different world for me. And it's funny because now I'm starting to like get familiar with them. But like, it's that's a change that like I was not ready for. And you both were on the receiving end of like my yeah. panic stricken like. <laughs> <laughs> ways early on yeah. with um, but it, there was like a ton of excitement with that yeah those emotions yeah. too yeah. Yeah. Like, so it's it's been good but like change yeah, do you feel like that change in your interaction with students has given you any like more insight on the why of understanding the end user and the decisions that we make in IT or do you think it, it like hasn't really given anything because like you're not really dealing with them in that way you're just no not really like they don't they don't care <laughs> like, they're like, why are you guys blocking us? I'm like, yeah, why are you guys doing this? Why are you doing that? That's what they. I've care. I've tried to explain it to some of them. Some of them don't care. They just want to yeah. play the game. So listen, I don't blame That's them. Some of those for. games look really super fun when I'm watching over their shoulder. Yeah. Do you know? Can I tell you a secret? I don't know how to play, nor have I ever played chess. So I'm very excited when I come in here and they're playing that chess game. I've never games. played. Chess. I've seen tried, chess being played. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Really how I, nobody in my I, I was, family ever I was played. Taught at one point. And yeah, I, I wasn't even taught. Nobody in my window. family played, yeah. so I didn't play it. But I did play chess. We like, played oh, checkers all the time. Checkers, yeah. checkers yeah. yes, but <laughs> chess. Yeah, I just remember like the. I think it's the knight, the horse that goes in like an L shape. Yeah. And then that's like all I remember. Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, I guess in summary, we are really looking forward to your responses this week just in talking about change in your educational landscape, like in the, whether you're a new teacher or you're, you know, 20 years in, 30 years in, whatever it is, you know, like how has change affected you? What are some things that you've changed that you're proud of? What are some things that you'd like to change perhaps that you maybe need a little push for, you know, there's a lot of angles that you could take with change. So, you know, for this week, it's more of just like, let's just share out and see if we can kind of get some, muster up some courage to change some things in our daily instructional practice that we're looking to change. Um, and I think collaboratively, probably you can each give each other a little motivational advice on that, you know, as we do every day over here. That's it, guys. Nothing. Not even a closing statement? You're leaving me out here in the wind? Yeah. 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 Well. Words of wisdom for movies. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I can, I can like, deviate. Part. I can, I listen, we can. I? I don't know. I'm we not can, here in the wind here. We can, Was it well? Was it not well? Listen, we can well? continue talking about this, but then it's going to skew <laughs> no. off to, like, personal change, outside of work no, change. it's 9.58. Yeah. We got we to gotta close it up. Damn. All right. Well, Talk uh, to you next week. Have a drop. Everyone's got to move on with the day. All right.